welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Do you like my t-shirt? It's falling apart. It's like me. So, I thought I'd do a live recording, which I haven't done for quite a while, so I suppose I should invite friends really, shouldn't I, but uh, if I share this to a group, if I share it to... to sleep. Am I still there? Yeah. I wanted to share to a group. Jason News. I know it's a page though, isn't it? Let me boy to sleep is a page. No, it isn't. Share. So posted to let me boy to sleep. Page. Too many pages, that's what it is. Too many pages. I hope it's not shutting off whenever I... Uh, anyway. So, there's two people watching. So, hi. Hope that you can hear me okay. If the volume's not like proper loud, you can listen to this on the podcast because I'm actually recording it separate. I'll give you a little look, look. That's my recording setup. Oops. That's the microphone. That's the screen. So it will be available. I've not invited anyone. Maybe I should invite people. Who should I invite? Kissy's watching. Hi, I'm going to do a little wave. Hello. And so if you've got any questions for me, I'm happy to answer. This is kind of what I'm looking to do on my birthday on the 26th of August. Kind of a live thing. I just got a message from someone saying I can't read it out because it's on my phone I'm using the phone to video saying that I look really tired and um, am I okay I'm a little bit tired and I haven't really been very well I'm alright you know but generally a little bit I've been a little bit run down I think the last uh, couple of weeks but I'm okay I'm alright um, I'm hopefully, my plan, my plan, my plan, is to do, I want August to be my top month, really. so the video just cut out while I was doing this, that's why it's good that I've got the podcast, so if anyone's there, if you'd like to say hi, um, someone called Lie Life. As we are you, Anders is watching. So hello. I should be able to sort of. Um, uh, wave. Monica's there. Hi. Hi, Jason. Um, hi, Lilith. How you doing? You alright? Don't my chin look big? <laughs> I look like I've got some kind of weird, massive chin. Um, so yeah, this this is just, it's a little bit distracting, but hi Monica, I thought it'd be nice just to sort of say hello, you know what I mean? 
I do like a more personal thing. I used to do these every now and then. The live Let Me Boy to Sleep. Uh, but I haven't done one for absolutely ages. And uh, Nadia says hi. Hey, hi Nadia. And uh, it's just good to see you all here. Lilith says fluffy ferret chin. Oi, oi. Andre loves rubbing himself against my chin. Honestly, I think he, he thinks it's a ferret. Because it probably feels like one. It's very... I actually had a... A friend of mine, she's uh, she's engaged to be married. She is to this, to this man. And she was... I was talking about my beard and she said, Oh, I can't stand beards. I'm just too itchy. I said, well, I'll have a shave then. <laughs> uh, no, I said, well, hi, Brett. I said, so being with a man with a beard's a turn off. And she said, yeah. So I said, can you put your fiance on? She said, no need, we're on loudspeaker. I said, oi, Dean, now you know how to get rid of her. Now you know how to end a relationship if it's not going well. Just grow a beard. He found it funny. I'm gonna have a drink of coke. As you know, I don't normally drink this stuff. So I'm recording audio and doing a video. At the moment, I'm not gonna bother. Hi, Rick. I'm not gonna bother editing. Editing editing the video um, with the audio like together because I can't be bothered although I might do that in the future um, what I'm going to do is leave the, the video on Facebook hopefully I'll be able to download it and then add it to YouTube and then I'll just add the podcast to the podcast like normal oh, this is boring isn't it it's really weird see myself be boring is stranger than just being boring does that make sense Catherine Ball Jane Ball is there hi hi I'm gonna click to wave to everyone sorry wave I'm gonna wave to everyone who's just making the camera move hello everybody so yeah this is just as I said it's a if anyone's got any questions, that would make it a little bit easier for me because my face is distracting me a little bit. <laughs> it really is. That's a little bit distracting. Anyone got a question? Got a question? Anyone? 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 Uh, Rachel told me earlier that she did not think that I looked like Elvis Presley, which was... I said, look, because he did have a beard connector game, so the internet went out. So I gave, I don't know why it's doing that. Why? It's this, I'm not using the internet for anything else right now. It's LMBO. Is that Limbo? Yeah. So yeah, I did a. Oh, I've got an itchy eye. Oh no, we're not supposed to wash it. Like touch our eyes, are we? I suppose I can't really give myself anything, can I? I don't touch anything else. What is your favourite food of yours, and why? Oh, my favourite food. Oh, I've got a hair in my mouth weird my favorite okay I'm gonna talk about my favorite happy food okay my happy food so uh, it would be a cheese a sweet corn and pineapple pizza big massive pizza 
Not that I'm going to eat you all in one go, but I'll make it last all night. And I don't always eat you all, but that's the thing. Nick says, love the beard. Hi, Nick. Thank you. Um, grew it just for you, because I'm glad you finally told me. I can shave it off now. I've been waiting for months. Sweet corn and pineapple. And the reason for this is because... As I said, I'm nearly 50, 50 in 26 days, or 25 days. Did I say 60? 50. 50 in 25 days. My earliest, one of my earliest memories as a kind of adult, when I was 16, um, or seven, no, 17, was the first erection, oh no, election that I ever watched on telly and ever since then I've watched the elections I stayed up all night and watched them even if I was working sometimes I try and have the day off the next day you know but I'd watch them because that's the first time I got interested in politics by the way this is my my arms the skin coming off um, and there was this kebab shop, pizza shop, kind of pizza kebab shop, and it had a pool table downstairs that I wasn't supposed to really go in because I wasn't 18, but he used to let me go down there anyway, and I was friends with the person who owned it, because I worked in a chip shop, and so we had something in common, and I used to go there after hours, because it'd be open till, I don't know, 11 o'clock or something, and I'd finish work about 9.30, 10. So I'd go out around there. See, the internet went off again. This is brilliant, this is. Uh, I started um, buying these big pizzas, and they were massive. I'm talking huge, bigger than the ones I get from Domino's now. Massive. Honestly, you, you, this is really big. You need, I needed to to get it home I needed to place it on top of a car that's not true but I was trying to think of a, something funny to say and it didn't work big though really big and then that became kind of my favourite because I know 16, 17 is an adult but I was living on my own uh, independent kind of I suppose and it was one of my first things that I kind of enjoyed doing, sort of as a working man, working per san, working jsan, and basically, so sweet corn pineapple. Ever since then, every election election night which is every four years usually sometimes it's less depending since 1987 I've had sweet corn and pineapple large pizza and see I could even make this boring can't I wow and the and I like to watch boxing as well so I like to have a sweet corn and pineapple pizza when I'm watching boxing it's probably the carbs, to be fair. It gives me a lift, it fills me up. I know it's not healthy, but, you know, I, I don't, I can't afford to eat a pizza regularly. You know, it's up 20 pound now. Uh, during the coronavirus, or oh, I don't normally mention the word, do I, in my recordings, but during the, uh, the, weirdness I didn't I haven't eaten anything at all you should have seen me before I was about 40 stone look at me now I mean I'm practically skin and bones no I I used to I didn't used to eat out a lot I didn't used to get takeouts a lot 
but where I live, I can't get deliveries, hardly at all. I can't get McDonald's deliveries or using any of the uh, Uber, um, Just Eat, all those apps that you get. I'm sure you've got probably different ones in different countries, but none of them will, will deliver anything of any kind of decency here. The only places that they can deliver from would be some pizza, pizza pan, <laughs> some random, you know, made up kind of pizza name that you don't really, you know, like, I want Domino or Pizza Hut or, you know, I want something that I can rick. I just, I trust, I trust them because I've used them for so long. There used to be a pizza place across the road from me in Stratford. Because in London, for those who never lived in London or... For those who never lived in the city, in, you know... But then again, I don't know what it's like in other countries. Apart from Belgium, I know that's very flat. Very flat. It's the flattest place I've ever been. Belgium, so it's... I think it's a really good place. You've got places like Jamaica, Spain, hot countries that are really good for people with arthritis. But I reckon people that are in wheelchairs, I imagine going to Belgium would be a really good thing because you can get around a lot easier. No, no hills, no mountains. It's flat. I'm not saying everyone in wheelchairs should all be put together. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it would be ideal if you, or if you get out of breath or stuff, you, you know? Because hills are no good for people that um, struggle with walking up hills. See, where I live, well, not where I live now, but where I used to live. Well, I still live here, but... The town of where I live. There's two hills. One is pretty steep, and one is a bit more, a bit more kind of gradual. One's called East Hill. One's called North Hill. And yeah, it's steep. And I remember being on a bus, but I've been on buses lots of times. I don't have. That. Well, I suppose if I actually went through all the different memories of being on buses, there probably are quite a few. Um, have I answered your question about the food yet? I did used to like a nice kebab. I did. It's something, um, but that's like a drunk thing. Because I don't drink alcohol anymore. But when I used to drink alcohol, I think a kebab is probably one of the ba bestest things in the world. Hi Vanessa, lovely to see you. Hello. Hi. Um, other food, I suppose we go to like normal human food, like proper food. I like a roast dinner if I'm not cooking it myself. Like a proper, I love Christmas dinner. So Vanessa says, good evening, sending my loves from Nova Scotia, Canada. Hi Vanessa, lovely to see you. Hope that everything's okay in Canada. Um, this is going to sound like a really stupid question and it's genuine because I think if anyone listens to me regularly, you're aware that my geography knowledge is... Um, I felt maybe going to have a doctorate in geography. And Lilith saying, mm, is that about the kebab? Or, so you like a nice kebab as well, yeah? So Vanessa, um, in Canada, I've got a friend who moved to Canada. And I was just wondering if you know him. He's, um, Molly's here. Hi, Molly. Hi, Molly. I'm waving to you. 
high. Um, I'm trying to keep up with all the all the oh, kebab. <laughs> um, I do like a, yeah. I don't like kebabs. The thing is, I don't like. But, but, you know, people put um, mayonnaise on kebabs sometimes. It just doesn't. No, don't look right. It just no. Don't like mayonnaise. When I lived in Ireland, I moved to Ireland in 1994, I think it was about September time, and I moved there with Andre, the original Andre. Hi Teresa, if Andre comes near me I'll pick him up so you can see him. Actually I've just heard he's run to the front door and he's just done a massive poo, so I probably don't want to pick him up. So, I think he probably will come over here though, because he likes to be, he pretends he doesn't want to be on camera, but he actually, Andre, do you want to come and say hello to your fans? Huh? Andre, you want to say hello to your fans? Do you? That's a no, he's not interested, sorry. In order to grab him, I have to move the camera. Mind you, I suppose I could move the camera, couldn't I? Shall I get him? Alison, hi Alison. Give me two seconds, I'm gonna move the camera around and I'm gonna grab Andre. I think he's had enough time for his bum to dry. That's grim, isn't it? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm showing you Andre, I just realised I think the camera is focused on my big fat bums. Please, sorry about that. I'm just holding his legs together so. Molly Rose is saying woo woo. Hello, I'm not sure what that was for. Mm. Give Daddy kisses, look. says hello fluffy sausage Vanessa says there's a cutie Nadia says yeah go on show us Andre Molly says woo see Alison says she's watching oh hello uh, Lily says he heard your name and kisses give kisses give kisses give kisses I tell you what was weird the other night. It was early evening. It wasn't like late. And Andre was he was in the field where he likes to go. I just found a bit of the field. Look, don't know if you can see that. It's on the floor now. There was a little bit of corn or something. Um, cutting out keeps cutting out on the video. Um, yeah, so he is freaking cute. So he was there, we were in the, in the farm, walking down the road, you know, the like, pathway. And he, he stopped. I picked him up and he was like, get off me, get off me. Stranger danger, stranger. <laughs> I won't say that. And I let him down. And I could smell it like he'd let off a stink. So I picked him up. I know he doesn't need to go to the toilet, so I'm gonna hold on to him. And I, I picked him up and smelt him, and I could smell it, but only a little bit. 
but I could smell it in the air. So I think there was other ferrets around in the field. Or polecats or something out there. And he was going like, Whoa. <laughs> Can't believe how good an impression I do of ferrets. It's weird. But he's, um, he's been pretty good lately. Molly says, got to go. I'll watch the rest later. Nice to see you, Jason. Hi, Molly. Bye, Molly. Take care. Oh. So, yeah, my friend, Alex, he moved to Canada quite a while back. So I was wondering if you know him. I'd like to go to Canada. I like the idea of going somewhere where no one knows me. I'm just, you know, somewhere where people are just stop me all the time. <laughs> wanting to hug me. I'm joking. Um, hi Debbie. Why are you going Molly? This is your daytime isn't it? I should, yeah maybe there's probably other things to do isn't there? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I like the idea a little bit worried about the bears. I, mean, I probably look a little bit like a bear, but I've had dreams. Right, I've had dreams where I've been in Canada and it's been frozen. You know, hi Debbie. It's frozen. Like the, I mean, not the whole country isn't just frozen. You can get in, but it's snowy and it's it's I guess the that part of. Um, why don't you stay here with me? Seven twenty-seven here. Hello, hello, hello. Wow. <laughs> He's so bendy. I still love this. Look at this. The way he does. I, st I try not to play. Look, if you grab him like that, look. Look at the way he grabs it. He can't help it. It's just an automatic response. <laughs> okay, say goodbye then. Say goodbye. Bye bye. Look, there are people. They love you, Andre. They love you. Yes, they do. They all love you. Can you see yourself? Look. Do you want to get down? Do you want to get down? Say hello to David. Say hello to David. Hello, David. Hello, David. Hello, David. He wants to get down. All right. I love the way when he gets down, he like, shakes himself off. Like he's just got out of the water or something, you know, like a dog. Uh, Lilith's going as well. Bye, baby. Oh, to him. Yeah. So it's 7.27 in America. Um, bye, bye, Vanessa. No one wants to stay now. They're all going now. Andre's gone. The star of the show's gone. We don't want to stay now. And um, Molly's in Australia, so it's going to be... I suppose morning time is now, sort of afternoon, early afternoon. Um, Canada, isn't it roughly the same time as America? Although America's got different time zones, isn't it? So, you know, I think America, the earliest time zone, I think is six hours after us. I think we before, I think. I think. Vanessa says, no, no, I'm gaming. My team needs me. <laughs> okay, Vanessa, nice to see you. Bye. Um, this is saying bye to, Lilith was saying bye to Andre. Um, so what's it saying? Yeah, pizza. 
tell you what's weird, normally there's a little like tick, you know, a clock that's going, you know, why well, am I describing a clock? It's got numbers. Vanessa says 8.30 here and it's 12.30 a.m. there. Yeah, I know it's 12.30 here. I'll just, it's 12.31 actually. Oh, bye. Oh, Lilith. Lilith, don't you talk to Vanessa. She's my friend. What are you doing? <laughs> you know what? I went through a little phase, a little phrase, phase or whatever you want to call it. Probably about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. Yeah, it's probably about two years ago now. And I was doing this Let Me Boy to Sleep live on Facebook. And the video cut out again. Are you seeing the video cut out? Can anyone tell me? Is it cutting out or is it just my side? Is it still streaming? Um, and a few people actually kind of made friends on here. That's nice, isn't it? Um, Lilith says, Kebabs, Island, Christmas supper. <laughs> Are you writing it down? Are you writing down the stuff that I'm talking about? I don't remember. You know, lately I've been trying to... It's, Nadia says it's still streaming. Brilliant. Thank you. Oh, it's a quick freeze. Okay. And that's... It's not the only reason, but that's part of the reason why I'm recording it as well. So that it's still kept, you know, because this is just such an important recording, you know what I mean? What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. You know, I started naming and labelling or having a title for some of the Let Me Boy to Sleep recordings. I did one yesterday and I couldn't remember what I talked about. It's like an hour and 17 minutes or something and I couldn't remember one single thing that I munched on about. And because I did it early hours of the morning, I'd just woken up. I leave it into a little secret. But when I make recordings like that, I am pretty much still asleep. And I'm, I've got less of a filter. You might think that I don't have much of a filter anyway. <laughs> but people, sorry, they are. But you know what? Lily says people can be offended quite easily. I know the problem is, it's kind of, I'm, I come from two directions. Mm -hmm. Two directions. The first direction is, I really, I don't want to offend anyone. I'm not in it for that. I'm really not, I'm not alive for that. I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to, I know it sounds a little bit, um, <laughs> Nadia says, I never remember what you talk about anyway, because you fall asleep just as well. <laughs> Your sarcasm being the nice, Jason. Yeah, it's sarcasm. It is just, it's, I'm, I am sarcastic, but I try, to be fair, normally I do sometimes, I don't aim it at individual people. I might aim it at a group of people sometimes, but most of it's aimed at me. If you listen to the recordings, most of my stuff is aimed at me. My, you know, um, jokes and silliness. I'm not really... <laughs> um, it takes me three or four podcasts because I can't stop laughing, says Lilith. Thank you. That's from, that's from, from Nadia. I told you before, Lilith, Nadia's my friend. Um, I... I didn't know how these podcasts were going to come together. I didn't. If you listen to my very first Let Me Boy to Sleep, it is so serious. It's me saying, yeah, and you can relax and you calm down. It was basically a hypnosis session. That's what it was going to be. <laughs> Liz says, sorry. I was joking. You're joking, joking, joking. I don't look like I've got any teeth, do I? I, I, I do wonder if I lose my teeth, because it is possible, isn't it? Will it affect how I talk? You're British, not rude. It's called a sense of humour in it. It is Nadia, it is. Is it Nadia or Nadia? I don't care, I'm just, just, <laughs> just wondering. It's 
it's just being me. Whatever me is, you know. But when I wake up, it's quite weird because I can be in a horrible mood. But when I wake up, first thing when I wake up, I'm pretty quick. I'm slow, but I'm quick at the same time. I can be quite, um, I don't know what the right word is, but if you listen to the ones I do f when I've just woken up compared to the ones I do, like this one, I've been awake all day, pretty much, apart from when I've been asleep. It's a little bit different. Nads. Okay, I'll call you Neds. I've never called anyone Neds before. Got punched in the Neds once, but live little again. It froze. People got to grow a thin, thick skin. I swear, I love apathetic. Chase, apathetic. <laughs> Apath Am I apathetic or just pathetic? Think what what hap what's happened? What's happened is first of all I've been honest. I think down the line for those that listen to my recordings over, I mean let's face it, what's it? It will be what two and a half years now. I've been doing these let me bore you to sleep recordings. I've been making podcasts for fifteen years and. I suppose I let my hair down a little bit, and that's the right expression. Push it up, and I just I say "and" a lot, don't I? Can't help it. I don't like I don't like sentences ending. I just like to keep it going on and on and on, and that's a hypnosis thing. But I seem to do it during. Nadia says it's Nadia or Nadia. Thank you for that. That was really helpful. <laughs> oh dear. Hi, Temmy. Nice to bring bring you. Bring you. It says bring them on camera, so it's, it's nice to say hello. Um, when I come onto Facebook, I and do like a, a live broadcast. I get a lot of people come on, you know, they like watch and then they disappear because they don't know who I am or what I'm doing. <laughs> like, who is this bloke? And then I think, well, surely you must be on my friends list. Hi, Temmy. I've actually had people in the past say, who are you? Why are you on my friends list? I said, that's not something you need to worry about any longer. <laughs> bye bye. Hi Tammy, hi Robert Riley, nice to meet both of you, to see both of you. The thing is, I don't know how many people from Facebook actually listen to my podcasts, that's the thing, I don't know. I know some that do, because you've made yourself known to me, in the sense of like contacting me, and um, I don't know who that Lilith man is, I don't know who he is. <laughs> but some people, you know, have let, but there's other people who sometimes they'll send a message and say, oh, I want to thank you because I've, I've been listening to you for the last year or two years and you helped me get through a relationship breakup or uh, I had uh, one from a young lady, she said, and I can't believe I'm old enough to call someone who's about 18 or 19, 20, a young lady. Oh, I feel ancient. I said to her, um, she said, oh, thank you for helping me get through my degree. I've been listening to you during my three years of college or, you know, university. And like, wow. I, suffer. I like that. I love messages like that. Uh, I don't like messages where people tell me off. I don't get many, but occasionally I... Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, not that I'm reactive, but uh, um, I would turn red, but I'm already red, so I can't really 
turning a different colour. Why was the Hulk green? Well, he didn't have to be green, did he? I never understood that one thing about the Hulk is he always woke up with trousers on. Yet, guaranteed, I'm talking about the original TV show for those to, well, either really, but if you go back, no, I never hear Nets, Nets says, you actually get complaints. Yeah, I have. Um, Lilith put a picture of a green man. Where do you get all these pictures from? I can never find stuff. Uh, Robert, hi Robert. Hello. Um, got all these pictures and these gifs or gifs or whatever they are. I only know a few. I found a few, but I don't know. I yeah, the Incredible Hulk. Bill Bixby was very quite little he's probably taller than me but he was slim it's not nads it's not okay i can't help it now i've got to call you nads please forgive me i know not what i do <laughs> i have to call you nads um they're in emojis says lilith on my iPad earlier and I pressed a button and loads of these emojis came up and I don't know where they came from genuinely but there's hundreds Nadia says weird though that people complain yeah I mean I suppose in some ways I think well if they were paying for it then they'd have a you know, a legitimate reason. But I suppose if someone's going to spend an hour listening to me, that's an hour of their time that they're never going to get back, isn't it? But then why would they listen for an hour? And, uh, I don't know. Weird though, that, yeah, Lewis says part of your updates. Oh, okay. I don't know, um, I'm going to read out some of the complaints, I don't get many to be fair, but I sometimes I get a little bit and I read out the nice ones as well, but I kind of, Nadia says, I mean that they could listen to something else, you're not forcing them are you? No, I mean, not usually, not since I had my gun confiscated can't force anyone to listen anymore. <sighs> Even Andre just does what he wants. He leaves the room usually when I do a hypnosis session. I heard him the other night say, oh, God, not again. Like, no one ever listens to you anyway, Dad. What are you doing it for? Just talking to yourself. Like, no, Andre, I have people listen. Where? Where's the proof? I do. It's weird doing this when I'm actually on camera because <laughs> I'm used to doing this um, uh, without seeing my own face. Lilith says, some people can never be pleased or satisfied. They are just grumpy and crotchety with nothing else to do. Yeah, I think, you know what, I think maybe sometimes with the internet is we can be more honest with the internet then perhaps we can be in real life with people. So if you're in a room, let's say if you're in a restaurant with friends from work, let's say, I don't know, and you've got like six people there and you're all just eating and people are talking. If that was happening in a environment like a chat room or if that was happening online, there might be a lot more said than what's actually said. So someone might say, oh, this, you're just boring, can you just shut up? I don't want to hear about that anymore. But they don't, they just carry on eating their dinner. So, 
It's something about saying what's on your mind. Ulysses, armchair activists. Yeah. I've probably done it, but I think we've all done it though, haven't we, a little bit. I don't necessarily mean complaining about someone, but um, I complained about a bus driver, actually, who was really rude to me and another customer. I've never done that before, but I did it. So I had to, because it's out of order. I wasn't so bothered about me, but this lady in a wheelchair was just being given the third degree, being talked down to. It was like, oh no, I'm not having that. Linda says, hi Jason, hi Linda. Um, nice to see you. I can't remember what I was talking about. I don't know, what was I talking about? Anyone? Lilith, are you keeping a track of what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, crotchety people. Yeah, I um sometimes when I was on YouTube, because I used to be I wasn't you know, I wasn't like a big player on YouTube, but I was one of the I don't know, I was a known hypnotist on YouTube, if that makes sense. Yeah. Bus driver. Lady in a bus. Why, why, bus? Not. Are oh, you telling me what I'm talking about? Bus. I'm just a white people from bus driver. Lady in a wheelchair. Bus. What? <laughs> it's like word association game. Yeah, yeah. This, this woman, um, on a bus being told. Okay, okay. Stop, stop. I've got it. I've got it. I'm, I'm back. Um. got in this bus the week before right the same bus driver there was a woman and she was having a go at this young girl I say young she was probably about I don't know teen college age when I was 17 or something bus yeah Nadia I've got it bus winding me up um, I've never been so angry Hi Rachel, so big. Everyone say hi to Rachel. And I've done a big wave there. So I was on this bus, and the week before, anyway, the week before, she was arguing with this young girl, and all the young, all of this, she was about 17, 18, 16, I don't know, college age. And this woman was being really rude to her, and she started to be rude back to the bus driver which is what you'd expect from a teenage girl or a teenage boy. They're not going to take that. But the bus driver has been really rude to her, like, wow. Hi. And the bus driver actually started talking to me and bringing me into it, saying, what do you think? I said, just let her on. Basically, she had a bus pass. And the ticket was, I think the ticket that she had was a little bit ruined, so she couldn't tell what it was or something. I say, and, or she had a phone, and the phone didn't work. Um, so she had a bus pass on a phone, something like that, but the phone battery had gone, and she wouldn't let her on without paying, so she said, well, I'll just pay. But the bus driver was going on and on and on and on and on and on. She got me involved, and I said, well, just let her on which is not what the bus driver thought I was going to say. Deb, Deb, hi Deb. And then every single person that got on afterwards, she was slagging off this girl who was on the top floor, slagging her off to her friends. It was really weird. And it went on for about 20 minutes, seriously. Lilith says, I thought someone was knocking on my door. No, it was David farting next to me in bed. Oh my goodness. How can a fart sound like a knock on the door? I'm jealous. It sounds like weird for me to be jealous of, doesn't it? Perhaps I shouldn't have said that out loud. I don't know, I just... I mean, that's like a, f a cracker, isn't it? A firecracker. Well, I don't know. A 
course I've never farted, so I would not know. So this woman was really rude to this young girl, so I wasn't massively... <laughs> Nadia says, so romantic, Lilith. Um, and... <laughs> she's my son. Um, um, you're throwing me off, stop it. Yeah. So, 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 I wasn't particularly impressed with this woman because she was rude to this young girl and then she was being horrible to her all the time. And, you know, so I was downstairs listening to her and what she was saying was well out of order. You shouldn't, you know, bus, you winding me up, Nadia, you want to wind up tonight, I can tell. And <laughs> so I left it. I didn't say nothing. And then the next week it was a, it was another Friday. I think I had an appointment in town or something. I got on, showed my bus pass, and took it. And she grabbed the bus pass off me. And she said, uh, "Let me have a look at that." It's no reason for her to do that, you know. But she did it, which I was annoyed about. And she was held, I said, give it back. She was holding it. And she said, um, PMSL. Um, she, P, PMSL, that's another letter to PMS. <laughs> and I, so I was on the bus. She took my bus pass away. She looked at the picture. She said, that don't look like you. I said it is me, well, so it's not, it's a card isn't it, it's a bus pass, it's not a human being, I didn't say that, I wish I had, but I thought it was quite funny, and she said, I said well it is a picture of me, he said, that don't look like you, and she said what's your name then, now I don't think I have to read out my name out loud on a bus in front of all these other people, being a celebrity, I like to just be a bit anonymous when I'm in public. <laughs> uh, but her attitude was really wrong. And she was saying, oh, you look so old now, and just kind of stuff like that. It's like, you know, she was just really rude. Yeah, I know, I should have said that. Um, that was annoying. I kind of made a joke of it, because I thought, no, I'm not going to get caught up in a in an argument, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to get off, get to go, go and sit down. And then she started, uh, this woman in a wheelchair was being pushed by a young lad, probably, again, like 17, 18. And she showed a bus pass and she said, that's got, that's got him on there as well. He's my uh, second, because you can get bus passes where you can get someone that goes with you assisted. Lilith says, who are you supposed to look like? Elvis, I told you, when he was in, uh, was it the Western he was in? Oh, you mean, oh, yeah, yeah. I just said, you've been out in public once. This is, this is back in the day, you know, back when there was a public. Uh, and... So this woman was in this wheelchair being pushed by her grandson. She said, oh, that's my grandson. Is it? Can you prove it? She said to her. I thought, and I thought, you know what? She's talking, she, do, she said other stuff and it was just so disrespectful. And I thought, if that had been my nan and I'd have been pushing my nan in the pushchair, onto the bus, although my nan would never allow herself to be pushed around in a push chair, not push chair, that's <laughs> a pram in a um, wheelchair, sorry, um, she had a thing about it, she just didn't like it, didn't like to be, they kind of, I think some of my family forced her into it sometimes, 
but she really didn't. It's just had a real, real didn't like it. Anyway, so I thought, and then she, again, she was being rude to the other customers that were getting on, and I looked at the face of the old lady that, that was in the wheelchair, and I thought, no, I don't like this. So I, I, I made a complaint. Never, I don't think I've ever complained about anyone, ever. But I had to, just... I didn't know her, but I basically just went to the website and posted and just said, this is the ticket number, This because it gave the time, the bus, the drive, everything, all the information, because I kept the ticket. And, yeah. I just... I don't know what it is, around here, most of the bus drivers seem to be really, really grumpy. Now my friend crossed the road the other day, he chucked a cup of coffee into the bus driver's face and said, have you got the time? And the bus driver wouldn't even tell him. It's weird, I just don't get it. So I just normally do that when I'm do <laughs> when I'm doing a when I normally do a podcast. I usually do a little dance, but you can't see it obviously, so it's a bit weird. No one's sending messages. Send me some messages. We all hate me now. Oh, he doesn't like bus drivers. No, no, I've got no issue with bus drivers. I like people that do that. They are grumpy and buffalo too. Says Linda. Yeah. Do you reckon it's a course they go on to be grumpy? I mean, I think that's uh, doctor's surgeries as well, doctor's receptionists and doctor's surgeries. I think they're trained to be grumpy and un unhelpful. I don't know, it seems every doctor's surgery I've been to, it seems to almost be like they dislike me before I even get in there. I don't get it. I don't understand. That's like here in South Carolina. South Carolina, Carolina. Linda says, what do you want for your birthday, Jason? I've got one word. Everything. Everything. Um, I don't know. What can you give a man that already has everything? Good question. Lynn Lilith says, it's part of the training manual, I think so. Um... No, I, I don't want to, it's weird because I'm like leaving these big gaps without talking, which I don't normally do when I do the podcast. And then I talk again. And Rachel says, I will put an order in for everything. I think if you go onto Amazon, just go to, you know, just click in everything. I don't know, it's, I'm not, I've kind of got everything. Well, there's always stuff I need. I mean, most of the time, when I buy stuff, I don't buy it for my own fun. That makes sense. See, I've got um, my iPad. I didn't buy that for my pleasure. I use it solely for all the work I do on the podcasts. And chocolate bars. I can, yeah, chocolate bars, wow. Yeah, I had some chocolate earlier. I need to, I'm, I'm getting a little bit concerned about my waistline, just a little bit, because I really don't feel comfortable walking out in the sunshine with a t-shirt on. Now, I don't wear stuff that's tight anyway. That's a no-no for people that are big. You just don't. Well, some people do, and it's up to them. But, I don't, I wear loose clothes, I'm like XXL or something, but none of my stuff is tight on me, it's very loose, most of it. I don't like being constricted, because I look like a, some like glow worm or something, when I've you know, got a tight t-shirt on. Linda getting plenty of Coca-Cola, says Nadia. Stop talking about me, I'm here. 
Rachel says my fridge freezer just died, so I'd have to buy another one. Oh. Um, I've been quite lucky actually, because when I moved in here, I bought a brand new fridge, brand new washer. Well, there was nothing in the in the kitchen. There, there was there was stuff in the kitchen, but it was the floor, obviously, and and cupboards and a sink. You know, just basic, but there was no white, no white goods, I think they called them it. So I bought a washing machine when I first moved in, and it's still running fine. Uh, I've got, I bought a fridge, which is still running fine. My dad gave me a freezer, which goes underneath the counter. That's fine, but I don't, don't use that for too much. And I bought myself one of those freezers that you can... It's got a lid. I suppose all freezers have got lids in them, mate. But it, it opens from the top. I don't know what, what you call those ones. But it's not a big one, but it's big enough for what I need. And everything's working, you know? No, nothing's run out yet. I think the thing that I've missed the most, the thing that would be the biggest thing to lose, would be the washing machine because it's, a, it's expensive to replace. That washing machine cost me £350 five years ago. Uh, and it was a low energy one. So I tried to get a decent, like, green version. It's white, but you know what I mean, green. Like, um, I wasn't bothered about the cost of it so much as if it's using less energy. Chest. Rachel, ch how come I forgot the word chest? Chest freezer, that's it. But it's, it's like a half a chest freezer. It's not... It's not like a like a big one, you know, like the old ones where you could fit a whole body in. This is just, you know, you'd have to <laughs> have to cut someone up. To <laughs> Forget that. A laptop says Lilith. Well, everything. My laptop died. I had to dissect it because you can't chuck laptops away. You have to you have to take bits off, and I recycled the whole thing. So I took all the plastic off. Got rid of all the just everything so you know did that I knew the laptop was breaking because it kept shutting down kept shutting down I had problems with it that's why I got the iPad oh, I've got itchy balls um, I just realised I was on camera I there's one thing saying I've got itchy balls as another th and scratching them when I'm doing a a podcast because you might think I'm just joking but I usually am. Nadia says in the freezer in case you forgot what you were talking about. <laughs> but that's the point of doing the, the these boring things is because then I, I do lose track of what I'm talking about and then I go off somewhere completely random or weird or some but it's genuinely that's how I am I think uh, you can't do that in a conversation with people that's why I prefer to just talk to myself I think in some ways because then I could just fl let it flow you know what I mean rather than having to aim it's that's why I urinate in the bath there's no aiming involved no I don't I do it in the sink like everyone else I I don't know. It's weird. Uh, what was I talking about? A freezer. Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, Linda Foods, or maybe. I. I don't need. Yeah, I got the I got the iPad because I knew. Nadia says, just pretend we're not here. I need. I was trying to think what the word was. I was just scratching me nads. Lilith is watching, so Lilith must have left. Night, Jason says. Nick, need to sleep. Bye, bye, Nick. Um, I'll wave to what's her name. Um, so I got the iPad because it's basically a special offer, and it was a paid monthly thing. So it's it's thirty. I think it's something like 34 pound a month for 
the next two years or something like that. So I got so I got that from the place that I had my phone because I, I changed my phone over to a new one because the other one was just scratched and old. I'd had it for about three years, I think. So I changed the phone over. I was, oh, you know, I do use the phone quite a lot, uh, especially for sort of messages and checking stuff. It's plus you know, making videos because I was going to be making some videos. I used to use a phone all the time for recording. And then I started using the tablet because I bought the tablet last year. I'm still paying for it actually, but it's I bought that particular tablet because it's good for making images. It's good for other things. Then I found that it's good for audio. It's good for recording. And so now I can't show you the phone because I'm using the phone. That does that make sense? I'm using. I don't know how I would do it. I'm using the phone to re to make the video, and um, so I can ensure it here, yeah. but uh, yeah, that's why I got the iPad because I knew that the the laptop was going to die soon, and I thought I'll get it, I'll get that. It's the top notch one. It's the top one that came out, and I pay it monthly. And it's got like one gig, one terabyte storage. It connects to the phone, so I can make a video, upload it, and put it onto there. Yeah, so it's quite good for that. The stuff I can't do on the iPad, that I can only do on the Android tablet, and vice versa. And stuff I can only do on the phone that I can't do on the iPad for some reason. So I use all three. So I'm, I do the audio on the tablet I do the editing on the iPad uh, at the moment I'm making a video on you know on the camera on the phone when I'm making the podcasts especially these ones I'll be using the phone to look through messages and comments people have read to me or looking through you know different things to sort of read out if I'm reading the books, so let's say for the Jason's bedtime story time, I use the iPad because it gives me a way, it's a bigger screen with my eyesight, I need a bigger screen, can't read off a tiny little screen there. And I'm using the Android tablet to record. Does that this all, this all, all make sense? Rachel says, are you going to do a shed tour and where is the star of the show? Rachel, you missed everything. I was dancing around in a thong earlier. You missed it. Um, Andre was on camera, uh, probably about 10 minutes in to the video, I would say. Not 100% sure it was about that. So I was hugging him and stuff. Shed it would mean move my stuff around, but I can. I'll, I'll do that another time. Maybe I should make a little because I've changed some stuff. I did have it all wrapped in cling film and stuff, but it was like a sauna in there. I'm proper, really, really stinking hot. I go in there and I just be sweating. So I've had to take. Rachel says, "Not you." I'm not sure what that means. Um, uh, anyway, I, yeah, so I've taken all the outer layer off and I've got the inner, some of the soundproof. I still need to get some more soundproof. It's basically, it's that stuff that's behind me. I wish I hadn't put it onto this wall and put it into the inside of the shed, but it's too late. It's, it's there's holes in the shed so a bit of air gets in I've managed to put a light in there so I've got a light and like a uh, like one of those desk lights that I bought a while back that's in there now so I can see what I'm doing which is nice and I can turn it on from outside 
not outside the building, outside in, in the bedroom. And it is quieter. The only thing is, it depends when I do it. And if I want it, if it's, even if it's quiet, I need Andre to be in his cage. And I don't like putting him in his cage. Because if I don't put him in his cage, there's a 50-50 chance that he's going to come in the room and start scratching and come into the shed. Or if I close this door, there's probably a 70% chance that he's going to start scratching at the door. He doesn't like doors being left open. Uh, being closed rather. So, I don't know. I, I know realistically I could make, I could do probably four, five, six recordings a day if I was just willing to put him in his cage for a few hours and just do some recordings, go into the shed and make, you know, a couple of relaxation sessions, or one relaxation session, one sleep recording, deep sleep whisper, uh, maybe uh, not these ones as well, but I don't want to make the Lenny Boy to sleep recordings in his shed. I know I don't normally do videos like this, but I like, in fact, I prefer to look around when I'm making a recording. I like a little bit of space. But the sound quality is for the deep sleep whisper, it needs less background sound. It needs a smaller space, really. And also, it definitely doesn't need an Andre in the background scratching and banging away. Banging away. You can take that either way, can't you? I'm not sure if it was a question I just answered there or, or whatever. Is anyone still there? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, but I die out. It's probably time for me. Been on here for 70, 75 minutes or something. So I should go. Um, so, so, yeah, it's. Maybe. I don't know what you think. Maybe I should try and do a, I don't know, maybe a weekly show, not show, but a weekly podcast on here. Linda's here. Hi, Linda. Lilith, Rachel. Um, sort of as a, like a weekly catch up, maybe. But I don't know what a good time would be because. Although most of the people, the, a large percentage of my listeners are from America. I also do have people in Australia, friend, people that listen to me in the UK as well. Um, China, Taiwan, I don't know if I made that bit up, but Germany, various parts of Europe, Canada of course, South Africa. New Zealand, France, Australia. It sounds like that song is that way. We don't, we don't all different. Was that um, David Bowie and uh, Mick Jagger? And then we start reading out lots of places. So yeah, I don't know. But it's finding a time that's suitable for everybody, unless I just say, tough, I'm just going to do it when I want to. But that doesn't seem very fair. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what I'd like to do. What I'd like to do is, I think I'd like to do a live broadcast, but not on camera. I don't really like being on camera. The only good thing about being on camera is doing a live recording is getting the feedback, the live. So seeing Lilith, seeing uh, Linda, Rachel, Molly, um, it's going to go down all the different people, 
Rachel, Nadia, uh, Nick, Linda, Rachel, There's been quite a few anyway. There's other people. Who are you all thinking of? There's someone that I'm. Robert, Tammy. I don't know if Tammy's still there. I like Tammy, it's one of my favourite names. I think it's because. Wow, something's clicked up that says, What are you doing now? What are you doing now? What am I doing now? It's got to do with you. Oh, sorry. Rachel says, do a Zoom chat. What are you doing now? Nadia says. <laughs> I'm not sure how to answer that. Well, what do you fancy? I suppose I could do a Zoom chat. But I want to do it public, though. I kind of... i tell you what would be my... Something that I quite like to do is... Is what I'd like to do, but I've looked into it and I can't figure out how. I'd like to do a radio show, uh, like a regular evening for like maybe two hours or three hours, where I also played music, or maybe twice a week, like just at the weekend, Friday, Saturday night. I'll already at all, and I was thinking. I've looked into it because I've quite, got quite an eclectic. Nadia says, went to the ladies' room and got back. Heard you mention all their names, so thought you were leaving. Oh. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I am in a second. I think I am probably. But I was talking about... I've looked into doing a radio show. Obviously not getting paid, that would be nice, wouldn't it? I reckon I'd have an audience, you know. The Jason Show on Radio Newland, yeah. Hence what you're doing now. Okay, Nadia, I was... <laughs> How slow do you think I am? I understood, I understood. I, I'd like to do a radio show where, but there'd probably be there'd be more talking than music. That's kind of obvious, isn't it? I think really. But there would also be music, and it'd be. I think I'd quite like to do a request show, so people phone you phoned in. And I could speak to people as well, maybe, or just talk, and you sent your requests. Fairly slow, Nadia says. Oh, what do you mean? And it, I've looked into it. The only problem, the only thing stopping me from doing it, because I can do a live broadcast on a podcast on Spreaker. I do a live broadcast. I can, I can embed the player on my website. And you could just go there at 11 o'clock every Friday night and press play and I'll be live. But I can't play music because you have to have a license to do that. And to do that, to get a license costs, I've looked into it and I can't figure it out. It costs money. And I still, I've, looked, I've really I actually done research and I can't figure out how to do it. I thought it'd be easy. I really thought that there'd be a, a, a service out there, a service that you can just pay, you know, like a monthly thing, I don't know, 50 quid a month or 30 quid a month, where you can just, you know, a bit like with Spreaker, you can just plug in and you could do your radio show and then they would have, you'd have access to, you know, a catalogue of songs. Like, you know, millions of songs, you just choose one you wanted to. Yeah, Spotify. Yeah, but you can't, 
Spotify, you're not allowed to to play Spotify songs to a live audience. As far as I know, I'm pretty sure you can't I'm not legally allowed to play songs live, other people's songs, and can't record them onto a podcast either. And admittedly, I probably could get away with it for a while, because who's going to know? But, you can, Lily says, that sucks, how about do your own music? How can I do my own music? How? How? Oh, thank you. you. I sing well, thanks. I spoke. Yeah, but that would be... I wouldn't want to put someone through that. It's not, I mean, part of the fun of it was so that I could listen to the song as well. So let's say it's um, Men at Work. Who can it be now? No, I'll be listening to it and singing it and maybe talking over it, maybe maybe not too much, but a little bit now and then. And maybe talk about the song and my memories of the song and, you know, just random you know, just stuff. So if anyone's got any ideas, if anyone knows anywhere that you can do that or how to get out, I mean, if anyone's got a music license, they can let me have. Because I'm not going to be making any money from it. It's not going to be... It's just going to be... I suppose I could put adverts on, you know, like they do in a commercial radio show. But even then... I think some of the licenses are really expensive. You know? I think it's a little bit different for... Some of the commercial radio shows... They publicise, don't they? They publicise new recording artists. Rachel says, songs out of copyright. Didn't think about that, actually. I might look into that. Yeah. But as far as I'm aware, and this is just, this is off the top of my head, because I've researched copyright. And the copyright law came in in something like 1932 something like that it was a long time ago there was no copyright previous to that for things like music and you know there was there was a there was a time when there was no copyright and then I don't think there's going to be much prior to copyright and copyright I think lasts for some of it lasts for I think 70 years or something 50 years I don't know I'll look into it yeah I'll look into it a little bit more now actually but I just love the idea if I could just log in to a radio show on the tablet log in or on the iPad or whatever and just type in a song talk live type in a song okay let's have a little bit of ABBA shall we have a little bit of ABBA or um, Tiffany well you know something you know, Tiffany has been more up to date who can it be now who is it no what was her song who is it who can it be Rachel Karaoke. <laughs> that's the point, actually. I could do karaoke, but that's not fair. It's not fair on people's ears. Lilo says Thompson Twins. What? Ask them if they want to sing. <laughs> Men at work. Why are you could just <laughs> random? pretty sure men at work are copyrighted because they actually went to court over who owned the works who owned the music who owned the lyrics 
Who is this new the guys who sing their song? Oh, okay, sorry. Who can it yeah, who can it be now is men at work, but I think Thompson to his finger. Who I know that I think the I think I'm alone now. Doesn't seem to be anyone around. That's what I was thinking. Who can it be now? I think I'm alone now. Who can it be now? I think I'm alone now. Doesn't seem to be anyone around. I think I'm alone now. See what I mean? It's sort of similar. Who can it be now? That's my connection anyway. Also, here's another connection I've got. And you might not agree with this. But, listen to... Okay, okay. Go to YouTube. Here's my thing. No, Debbie Gibson. No, no, it's Tiffany. Was that wasn't Debbie? Who? I think I'm alone now. It's definitely Tiffany. Definitely Tiffany. Only reason because I love Tiffany. Loved. I was only. I was the same age as her when she, when she released that. I was probably seventeen. She was about. Well, maybe she was 15 or 16, I don't know. But yeah, I think I'm alone now. Doesn't seem to be anyone around. Um, Debbie, wasn't it play it to your heart? Tell me I'm the only one. Is it really love or just a game? That was, that was Debbie Gibson, wasn't it? Wow. Proud, no, I'm proud I didn't know that. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, Nadia, you, you didn't know the other one, so I'm not going to tell you a word. Tell it to my heart. Is that to Pal? Tell it to my heart, yeah. I'm bored. I'm, I'm bored by Toya. I'm not going to be playing music to get you bored. No, if I do this record, this, this radio show is not going to be boring. It's going to be born in 82. All these I remember because of my dad. Oh, cool. You're born in 82. And Lisa Stensfield, play it to being around the world and now yeah yeah. Oh my oh my baby. And 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 why. Oh my baby baby. Then it did it did it be. Cause my baby. Cause you love me. Ooh, ooh. Now if I did um tell it to my heart. Tell me I'm the only one. Is it really love or just a game? Is that really Lisa Sansfield? Are you sure it wasn't Debbie Gibson? Rachel says, I love Toya. Yeah, it's going back a while, isn't it? I mean, Nadia, you might not be wrong. I just, I don't know why I think Debbie Gibson, I mean, she was big as well, wasn't she? At the same time as... Tiffany, but they were very different, like different kind of, I think, uh, I'm not, to be fair, I'm not 100% sure, Taylor Dane, tell it to me, <laughs> yeah, I think that's, yeah, I think you're right, Taylor Dane, tell it to my heart, tell it I'm the only one, yeah, Taylor Dane. Wow, that's a name I'd forgotten. But if I did this record, if I did like um, a weekly or a weekend show, it would be a boring show. It would be me like this. This isn't boring, is it, me talking? Maybe it is, but but with music. So it wouldn't be... <laughs> it wouldn't be um, I wouldn't be playing boring music. I'll be playing music that's nice, that I like and other people like. Uh, so it would be like a, a different thing to the Let Me Boy You To Sleep. It would be, it would still be relaxing, you know. 
I think that's it's I think everything I do is gonna be kind of relaxing. It's quite a kind of laid back. It's just the way I am, I suppose. Who's who's angry? Someone's getting angry. Someone's doing like a red angry face. You could play eighties music. Yeah, I do that is my that's my era is Jason's motivational podcast. I've got a motivational podcast. Have you not seen it? Jason's motivate. Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know how motivating my recent, my, my my latest. <laughs> don't know how motivating my last one. My late. I can't speak. My latest motivation podcast was <laughs> a bit strange. I think. Born 1971, Nadia. You're one year younger than me. I'm quite eclectic when it comes to music. Yeah, I'm still on by Vanessa. Um, just about the, I think the picture keeps freezing on the video. But I just told about the radio, if I did a radio show, if I was able to do it. I would probably predominantly choose 80s bar. Because I used to be a DJ in one of my previous jobs for four years I was a DJ in a club and in a nightclub and I was there every Friday and Saturday night for four years so I kind of admittedly that was quite a long time ago you know I stopped doing that in 2001 so it's 19 years ago I stopped doing that although I did go back a few times just to help out but I know my way around music-ish, you know, I guess. But I like music from all eras. I'm not the biggest fan of the 70s music, which is weird considering I grew up in the 70s, you know, I was born in 1970. But I didn't really enjoy, <laughs> I didn't enjoy the 70s, if I'm honest. It wasn't my favorite time. Um, I didn't really get interested in music till the late seventies, probably around Greece. You know, when Greece came out, was it seventy seven, seventy eight? Big fan of Greece, and then you know, I think really, I I found my own tastes in music which was in the early 80s late late 70s but basically 80s that's when I started to get interested in music uh, but I used to listen to Buddy Holly well, obviously he was 50s wasn't he died in the 50s he was big in the 50s but I was really into like the music that was around then, everything from Duran Duran, every single top 20 song I would know, uh, from Nick Kamen, Madonna, people that maybe one hit wonders, to uh, singers that are still around today. So yeah, I was really into that, like, uh, my, my favourite song, my favourite artist was Shaken Stevens. Nolan Sisters, you know, I'm in the mood for dancing, feel like romancing. I mean, for me, that's probably the best disco songs ever. I would say, a favourite for me, above ABBA, but ABBA, Dancing Queen, is, I don't know about anywhere in the world, but I'd say any disco, pretty much you go to where there's people in their 40s, 30s, 20s, 50s, 60s, whatever, any age, put on Abba Down Dancing Queen, or Come On Eileen, Dex's Midnight Runners, that's a good one to end disco on, 
because everyone goes a bit wild, you know. And also Eileen has to clean herself off. <laughs> um, then so there's uh, Wake Me Up Before You Go Go Wham. Big, big song. Those are the songs that you can have an empty dance floor and suddenly it gets full within seconds. So it's... I mean, I, who does it? Lilith says, Bill Haley in the comments, right, one of my, f there's two songs that I remember from my childhood, like my early, early childhood. Well, two that I remember, like really, one was, unfortunately, um, oh God, I forget his name now, Gary Glitter. But he was big, he was a huge star in the 70s, the early 70s. And his I love you love, you love me too love. I was, I loved that song. And I was very, very young. But it was one of the first songs I remember, I just remember hearing it on the radio. Or maybe it was being played continuously and I was in my car or something. It's weird, but I just remember it. And another song when I was in the kids home, children's home, there is, I had this memory of Bill Haley in the Comets singing rock and roll, you know, one, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, and I'm like, I had this memory and I thought, well, why was I hearing it in the 70s? Because that was in the 50s. But that was the 50s, wasn't it? Old, uh, the, Bill Haley. So I looked and I found out that they re-released it in about 1975 or 1976, something like that. And I think it went to number one. So it was re-released, that's why it was being played on the radio. Um, madness, of course. I, I, I used to have an idea put Madness. I had a bought an album of Madness's greatest hits and it was a tape recorder, it was a you know, tape and I used to listen to it, which is what you're supposed to do isn't it, I suppose, it's not a very exciting story is it yeah, I bought a sandwich and I ate it I know what I mean, I used to listen to it over and over again I'd lay down on my bed and I'd just listen to it, it was so relaxing oh you're an embarrassment. Uh, 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 uh. Must be love, love, love. Do, do, do. So I used to love listening to that. So Buddy Holly, that, and my other favourite was the Monkeys, the best of the Monkeys. And I think Take the Last Train to Clarksville was probably my favourite. But then. Cheeky, rotten, scoundrel, whatever he calls Scouse, Scouser. It was another one of the songs that it's like, She's a wonderful lady and she's mine, all mine. And there doesn't seem to be a way she will come and do my mind. It's not easy playing songs with a girl in your dress. It's really weird lyrics. Why don't you cut my hair? Why don't you go out there? Why don't you do what I do when you see what I be wearing? You mentioned if someone's listening to this podcast and suddenly... I don't know what happened, but... An hour and a half in, he started singing. I'm sure he did. But I just couldn't be bothered to turn it off. <laughs> see, when I... See, I'm not, I didn't get to watch daytime like children's TV shows until I was about seven. Saying that, I might have done when I was a lot younger, but during the um, Catholic nun days living with them, there was no morning children's TV. And I think I was allowed to watch Emmerdale Farm in an afternoon after school and go to bed. So I I 
remember when I was about seven and seeing the monkeys and they were again TV shows from the 60s this was like 77 so it was like 10 years earlier they were you know they'd broken up and everything they were weren't a band anymore I said love it though love the show it's funny the the songs I loved every song they did so that was they were the you know and I was a big fan of Elvis as well but that was because of my brother Nadia says only fools and horses is that your favourite song? did you know that the bloke that wrote this wrote the show wrote the song and sung on the song as well did you know that? Um, his name has not in my mind at the moment oh, Sullivan Neil Keith Bill Richard Sullivan, anyway, surname was Sullivan. He wrote Only Fools and Horses, but he also sung the song. Only Fools and Horses, na 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 Yeah, I love that show. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Go to YouTube. Click on Cheers, put in Woody. And just watch, just listen to Woody's voice, right? Listen to Woody's voice. And then put in, what I would say is open two pages up, both of YouTube. So you've got one with Woody talking. But listen to his voice. The timbre of his voice, the sound of his voice. Okay? The tone, the gentleness. And then open another YouTube page up and put in Cheers theme tune and listen to that. I would swear it's him singing. It's not, obviously, because he wasn't even in the show when the show started. It was uh, a coach, wasn't it? Sounds like Woody singing. Sounds like Woody. Sounds like Woody talking. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? I thought I'd be, I'm doing it really quiet because I've got neighbours. Normally I'd scream it out because that's, that's how I sing. I'm a scream singer. Sometimes you want to go with everybody knows your name. Woody Hallam Helson. Weird, do you reckon he didn't... Why do they call him Woody? Because that's his actual name, isn't it? Woody Hamilton. I think it's time for someone else to talk. I don't think I've talked enough. So I didn't expect to be chatting quite as long as this. And I wouldn't have been if it wasn't live. So I won't do another live one for a while. But I do intend to do a live one on my birthday. Just to sort of... Well, I can't celebrate my birthday. I can't really meet up anywhere. I don't feel safe going anywhere public. I don't really have many friends really anymore. Family, I can't do a family get together. My dad's in his seventies. It's it's too risky. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna put him at risk by meeting up with him in case I've caught, you know, the lurgy and I pass it on to him. So I'm not meeting up with anybody. And that my dad was talking about coming down and going somewhere, like to a restaurant. Like, I'm not going into a restaurant. I'm not. I'm not sitting in a pub. I'm not going to a cafe, coffee house. 
nothing like that. I'm not doing, I'm not going anywhere where people are sitting there without masks. I'm just, no, I can't do it. When I said friends, I mean, you know, humans. I'm not, not humans, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're not humans. <laughs> I'm talking about Liff and Vanessa, thank you. What I mean is, like, local. I've got one, I've got, I've got a good friend that lives downstairs who I see fairly regular. I've got my little Andre. I've got a few friends on the phone that I can talk to. Um, what it is, is um, a lot of my friends, first of all, I moved from London. All my friends were in London. And then I moved, lost, and they were all pretty much connected to the comedy industry. Uh, people I worked with, uh, you know, and eventually I just lost contact with pretty much everybody. Then, I'm only human after all. And then, I got involved with the Buddhist center and all my friends, 85 to 90% of my friends were Buddhist. And then I moved away so I couldn't really get there very often. And I've lost friend. I lost contact with most of them as well. And I'm a bit of a reclusive now. Um, yeah. Hmm. So yeah. So I think my friends are kind of in other countries now. Not all. There are people in this country as well that listen to me and and my friend, but it's, I don't know, it's strange, strange, well, it's not strange, but it seems it's like, um, I'm unknown, but I'm known, does that make sense, it's, I thought I said that I'm one of the most successful failures, in the sense of, I've got no money, i uh, got, but I'm rich, you know, but I'm, I like to think helping, but you know, reaching. Well, I'm getting, you know, this month 140,000 downloads during July so far. It's the last day of the month, or it's the first day of the month, isn't it now, June? So I'm reaching quite, you know, quite a few thousand people daily. Some, you know, I get sometimes four, five, six thousand a day sometimes. Sometimes three, four, depending on depends. So it's you know, it works out about one point eight million a year. So someone is out there. I'm a staple in your house. Make sure you don't get a splinter from me then. Actually, that would that would be a staple. Well, I think the staple, I just think, is something you put into a, you know, in a pad to keep the pages together. I'm a staple. Yeah, maybe I'm a bit reclusive. But it's strange, because I feel that, like, oh, I don't know anyone. But in another sense, I'm reaching. You won't sit on me. You better not. I don't know what that means, but yeah, don't want to sit on a staple. They're, they're quite, ugh. Oh, it's nice to know the people out there, like Vanessa, Lilith, everyone, you know, that's Rachel, all different people, Molly. There's a lot of people out there that are just really lovely. Right, Vanessa, we need to discuss this another time then. <laughs> fight over me, fight over me. Um, <laughs> um, um, I've been thrown off now. Thank you, Rachel. We all love you. Thank you. Good. Cool. Thank you. Um, 
So yeah, it's it's just a little bit diff. It's in some ways, kind of, I'm on my own, but in another way, I'm also reaching thousands of people every day. Lil, if I was speechless, doesn't doesn't. Yeah, maybe blush. You can't tell with my face; it's so red anyway. You can't tell when I'm blushing. I turn green. Um. Something to grab hold of, Vanessa. Um, anyway, I need to go now because it's going to take me absolutely uh, not a, a speechless. Nah, nah, I'm never speechless. I've always got something to say. Which is why I've lost so many jobs. <laughs> I, can, I never, here's, I don't know if I've ever told you this, and it, this is a brilliant. Um, well actually it doesn't always work for all situations but I had a a supervisor I came home late from work like I'd be gone to lunch and I came home late came back from, to work late about 20 minutes late and he said where you been Newland and I said see it only works at certain times but I said to him, "Oh, Arthur, sorry, sorry, I'm late. I was, I just, I was searching for your birthday present." Now that only works if the person's birthday's coming up, or if you can do it Christmas or searching for your Christmas present. But it was perfect because he started laughing. And he didn't know it. He secretly loved me, but he was he was quite an angry person. But we did get on really well, and he he liked me. But he also used to because I used to be really rude to him, and he did. Then he'd be rude to, to me, but I was just I didn't care. And he didn't know what to think. But I did end up getting him a birthday card. I think. Here's another thing I used to do. This is cheeky. Trish, hi Trish. Back it when I was younger, I used to smoke roll ups at work. And I often didn't have any money, I'd run out of tobacco. So, what I would do, <laughs> this is really cheeky, I would get my packet of tobacco empty. Hand a Rizzler to to whoever's near me, a friend. Hand in the packet, hand in the, the packet, hand in the packet to back out. Do you want do you want to roll up? And he'd say, "Oh, thanks." He'd open it up and see that there wasn't enough there to make a roll up. And he'd go, "Oh, oh so I'm sorry. I can't believe I thought there was enough in there. I'm sorry about that." And then he'd end up giving me a roll up. There's only so many times you can do it with the same person, but I did it a few. I did that probably about 150 times, I'd say, when I was in my twenties. It worked every time. Just one of those things. Here's another thing. Here's a little trick. I should, I'm giving you my little tricks that you might not know about. If you're in if you need to get a letter from your doctor's surgery, okay, and you go in, you phone them up, say, yeah, you go in and they, they say, well, he's not done it yet. And they say, the, the doctor's here, but you're gonna have to come back because the doctor hasn't done your letter yet. And it's an important letter and you need it. My friend had this. And he was getting all angry, so I, I keep coming in here and I've I phoned him up and the letter's not done yet. I said, just follow my lead. Went in there, they said the same thing. Letter's not done yet, the doctor's busy, 
He's in the building, he's busy. And these two receptionists are there and there was no one else in the waiting room. I don't know what the doctor was busy doing. He could well have been busy, you know, I'm not gonna say he wasn't because doctors, we need doctors, so I love them. And I said to my friend, just follow my lead, just do what I do. I said, uh, we'll, do, we'll just wait then. Oh no, I don't know how long it's gonna be. No, we'll, we'll wait. I oh, know you don't want to wait, it could be hours. That's fine. And I take my friend and we sit down in the chairs and wait for the doctor to do the letter. The two receptionists became so uncomfortable. A few times they'd come over and say, I don't know how long it's going to be. It's all right, I'll wait. It's fine. It wasn't, we weren't a hostile, it was just, just being friendly. Like, that's fine, we'll wait. They wanted to talk, but they couldn't because we were there. I could hear them like, they were getting more and more annoyed because we were there. That was probably their time where they could like have a bit of a rest. So this probably wasn't really fair on them, but. My friend needed that letter, it's really important. It was like a medical letter that he needed. And so, I said, just any one of the guys said, no, just stay, just stay, just stay sitting. You'll be fine, we won't be here for long. And I could see they were getting for, we were there for about 15, maybe 20 minutes. And in the end, they went in and spoke to the doctor, asking him to do the letter, and then came out with the letter. And I learned that trick in the 90s always works it depends on the situation obviously but in that kind of situation it will work because people don't like to be filled under be under pressure even though it wasn't really pressure for them because they weren't the ones doing the letter it was a doctor and this wasn't just some random uh, it wasn't an unimportant letter this was something that he needed for medication really important letter that was just not being done and it was to do with mental health you know it's very important and I said just trust me and it works just, just sit there I'll sit see people are going to start shouting and getting aggressive they get nowhere other than maybe arrested kicked out and it's not fair on the staff either obviously they're just doing their job do everything really, really calmly and nicely. Just sit down, you know, it's fine. If you get a chance, if you can maneuver the chair, just stare at them. <laughs> if you really want them to work and get it sorted, go over and talk to them, especially if you're me. Five minutes of me talking to them or at them, they'll get the letter done. Getting ratchet, what's, what's getting ratchet? Another thing, I learned this from my friend and he was a real proper manipulator, always got his own way. So that's why I don't do this kind of stuff, but I did it, I'll do it in that situation if it's important. Um, and with the benefits, if it's a situation quite often you get turned away, I've noticed that, like, uh, I got, there's two things I got turned away for. And I carried on anyway. I thought, no. I realised years ago that some people don't know what they're doing. Yeah, make your people make a horrible scene to get their way. That's just toddler behaviour, isn't it? It's horrible. It's not fair on the staff. I mean, just sitting there, it might make the staff, the staff might feel uncomfortable. But it's not harmful, you know, it's not doing anything bad. It's just putting a little bit of pressure on them to actually do something um, which is not necessarily a bad thing I don't think and it takes a bit of their power away which is maybe maybe a little bit humbling for them as well because I think in a scenario uh, like a doctor's surgery most of the people coming in are unwell obviously 
and need I think should be treated with respect and kindness and gentleness gentleness and I don't see that happening all the time and I think it should happen all the time it's When I was when I signed up, um, when I phoned up to apply for my counselling degree in counselling, I phoned up the university, and the lady on the phone said, "No, you won't get on this course. I wouldn't bother. You won't be allowed on it. You don't you don't fit the criteria." That's what she said to me. So I just said okay bye and then I thought no why should I let some complete stranger who sounds like she's having a bit of a rubbish day talk down to me doesn't know me doesn't know what I'm capable of doing and I've been studying counselling for years before that anyway also hypnosis for since what 98 and I started going to university in 2007 so nine years of studying stuff like that and I could easily have just walked away from it and thought no this professional person on the phone said no but I didn't and I wonder how many people she put off that could have been in that on that course and every single person every single counsellor I would say has saved numerous people's lives just by doing the job not in a hero -y way just in a practical realistic way is all those counsellors have really not everybody comes in needing their life saved obviously but some people really uh, having someone to talk to even if it's just for six sessions can change their life and so this this person on the phone nearly stopped me from or put me off going any further because she put a stop to it she wouldn't even let me go for any further at all so what I did is, if I remember rightly, I actually went into the college myself, like physically, and spoke to some people there, and they said, yeah, you can apply. I said, okay, I was told I couldn't. They said, who told you that? And um, I didn't know who it was, it was just someone in administra ad admin or ad ad admissions or something. Anyway, I did apply and I did get on. And, well, I did the degree and passed the degree and all that stuff. So everything kind of went to plan-ish. Apart from the career part at the end of it. Because my career came to an end after about two years. Due to all the financial cuts from the government. The austerity stuff. Wow. And, yeah, so... Sometimes... There's people, it's, you got to just not listen to them. This video is frozen so much. Uh, the podcast, 130 minutes pretty much I've been talking. So I need to come to an end because I shouldn't still be talking this long. I've got other podcasts to make, man. It's going to take me about two hours to edit. Not the video because I'm just going to post it. I don't care. As it is, as is in it. But anyway, I just want to say thank you to all of you, and um, it's been a pleasure having a little chat, and I, I'm, I'm looking to do this in on the 26th of August, I don't know what day it is, um, I'm not sure, I'd, I'd, I'd have to look it up. So it's the first today, and it's a Saturday. So it's a 
Look, Saturday is the second, Sunday the second, Monday the third, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I think it's a Wednesday, and if it is a Wednesday, that's pretty groovy because I was born on a Wednesday. I wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be when I said that out loud. But yeah, I was born on a Wednesday. I don't know what time of the day. Um, I wasn't wearing a watch. But it's it was definitely a Wednesday. 26th of August, 1970. It was a Wednesday. And I am a Virgo. A Virgo. Yes, Virgo. Shut up. So I'm going to go. Thank you, everybody, all of you lovely people. Uh, 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 uh. Rachel was born on a Wednesday, too. Uh, 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 uh. Nadia says, Cheers. Lilith says, say thank you and bye to everybody <laughs> and even to the cheeky ones that <laughs> made me laugh so thank you and I will speak to you another time so this I would I'll continue doing these podcasts I'll do another one tomorrow but it'll just be a normal you know audio whoever wants to get my beard first just contact me <laughs> I'll shave it off and send it to you in the post I'll grab it oh he just done a wee I tried to grab him but I couldn't he just he like bent over did his wee in the corner I was like that, trying to grab him before, and he just shot off. At least he does it on the paper, which is nice. Well, it's not nice, but you know what I mean. It's, uh... Andre. So thank you very much, everybody. It's been lovely to speak at you. It's more to you, though, isn't it, when this interaction and I will speak to you again but I will as I said tomorrow I'll do another recording but it will be speed won't be video so thank you for listening and remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy so do something nice for yourself you kind of have, haven't you, by spending time with your cuddly, beardy Englishman. So, bye to everyone. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Now I'm just going to press finish.